Hi there everybody and welcome to another video. Here at Daring Beefcake I have this uh, VW Golf. This is a uh, 1.4 TSI. Uh, this is a 2010 model petrol obviously. Um, and I'm gonna be changing the, the water pump. So the water pump is decided to start making a noise. So it's become noisy but it's also slicking a bit of coolant. Um, so the coolant tank went down, the warning light came on, and as I was checking where this uh, coolant was leaking from, obviously I discovered the pump. Uh, however, it's also making a bit of a noise, so it, that is a bit of a telltale sign that the pump is gone potty. It, it's sort of, I think, the bearing inside wears out and then it sort of moves a little bit like so, and then it makes a noise. Um, and since I have to change the pump, I'm also going to change the V-belt. Just taking the opportunity here to do that as well. Uh, so the V-belt or alternator belt is just sitting on the side here and also runs the pump. So that's why, since we have to remove it, uh, we might as well change it. Obviously, unless you've changed it recently. Um, and also, I removed that bottom cover. It's just held in by about six or eight, eight, I think, Torx screws, like T20s, T25s. Uh, I removed it in order to check where the leak was. So I think I'm going to tackle this mainly from underneath. Uh, I don't recall, I, I don't think I've ever done one of these before, so bear with me. <laughs> I'll discover as we go along. But... Um, yeah, I think we need to remove the pulley. Well, first remove the belt, then the, the pulley of the water pump, and then the water pump. But uh, we may want to take the opportunity to remove the pulley bolts while the belt is on. So I'll get the car up and we'll have a look from underneath. Also, we need to drain the coolant. So I'm also going to remove the front wheel here and the splash guard. So that's going to give us a little bit of better access to the to the belt so I'm gonna get this wheel off and then uh, get the splash guard off it's just I can see held in by some Torx screws so you just have to follow it around remove whatever Torx screws are around so we can get that splash guard off or maybe half of it and push it around here Right, I removed some of the torques and uh, this part, it's sort of divided. So if you remove that, we'll have access to all this area here. So I don't think it's necessary to remove the top part because we have view to nothing anyway. It's just the chassis there. Um, so that gives us great access to the belt, to the pulley. Well, not great access, but, but better access than nothing. So now I'm gonna get the car up a little bit and uh, try to undo the bolts on the pulley. Okay, so those pulley bolts, uh, these ones here, um, I've already loosened one. I'm just gonna show you What they look like they're sort of this type of of bolt so you need one of these to fit that it's not a torx i don't really know what they're called but it's like a the size of it is an m10 and that fits on that and then you can undo it however I can't actually put a ratchet in here to undo it because there's not enough room. So I'm pretty sure they sell these in a different way, but I haven't got any others. This is the only one I have. So um, I'm using this nine mil to go in there. And that way undo, just crack open that. Once you crack it open, you can actually take it out with your finger. Uh, so I'm putting that in there.
putting that obviously on the bolt and then I'm using that as extra leverage there just to undo it so I'll just set it up and I'll show you what I mean right this is pretty much what I mean and uh, if you sort of do it quickly they come undone because you don't really want to be messing around trying to push it it sort of moves all the wheels otherwise but you don't want the the, the wheels to go backwards um, so if you if you do a um, uh, so what I mean is uh, if you are trying to open this little nut here instead of slowly doing it this way you can do it you can just crack it like doing it quickly like this and that sort of cracks it open without moving the rest um, so I can't really show you because I need my other hand to hold the, the bit up there and undo and do it with that right I might actually be able to show you I've got it right now nicely set up and just holding the momentum there <laughs> so what I mean is if you do that that's it that's loosen the bolt Remove the tool. And I might need the tool just to... Undo a little bit. There we are. I can't really undo much because otherwise it's gonna get stuck on the car frame. And well, before I, I remove it completely, I'm going to loosen the other one. Once they're loose, we can easily remove that pulley. But uh, before we completely remove that, we want to get the belt out. Otherwise, that pulley can come out, jump out because of the pressure of the belt. But um, that's how I'm removing or I'm, I'm sort of uh, cracking those little bolts open. They're not tight at all. They're probably... 10 newton meters or something like that right once you loosen those bolts we can release the tension we can release the tension on the tensioner here 16 mil socket um, just have to go anti-clockwise the belt will come out well technically you take it out but in this case it just swung to the it sort of came out by itself <laughs> um, but that's okay so normally obviously if you're operating with your two hands move that release the tension and then just take the belt out but as always avoid putting your fingers in between any wheels that you might be taking the belt out and also I suggest you make a drawing of how the belt goes back in because uh, that can often be a situation where you don't remember how it goes back in. So I've already done my own drawing. There's my little drawing, crankshaft, AC, aircon, alternator, tensioner, idler wheel, water pump. So now just remove the belt. You can check the condition of your belt to be fair this is not too bad but it it is getting on a little bit and uh, it's best to change it now now that i'm doing the water pump now we can remove these and remove the pulley
now our pup pump is sitting right there and he's got some uh, screws holding it, some Torx screws. We should hopefully have enough room to take it out. I think in fact there's only three bolts, three Torx bolts. Once, uh, before we remove the pump and we drain the coolant, make sure you're doing the job when the car is cold, because uh, this one is a little bit warm, um, but it was hot when it arrived to me. Uh, I waited a couple of hours for it to cool down a bit, because obviously you don't want to burn yourself. So all of this now is nice and at a normal temperature. And the little bolts holding the pump are those T30s. So I've already had my little ratchet there. And they're not really, they're not really tight. So I'm gonna undo those three. But um, you can sort of, if you undo that and take the pump out, all the coolant will come out on you. So um, we may want to um, remove some of the coolant, which we could do maybe from this pipe here. If we just remove this pipe, we'll get some coolant out. Okay, to take this hose off, we need to pull that clip there and that will clip will fly out <coughs> hopefully to be seen again usually will fly out never to be seen again but no to be fair that usually just comes out and stays there it just sort of comes out halfway and it remains in there, but uh, obviously when you're doing it with one hand sometimes you can't control what happens and now we can pull this pipe out coolant is coming out. Um, it might be the case that when we remove the pump some coolant will come out of there anyway so nothing is guaranteed. Okay so make sure you have obviously your bucket underneath this area here although if there is coolant leaking from here it could go anywhere. Um, by the way if I haven't mentioned this uh, these are T30s I've already loosened the three of them, so there we are. Oh, there will definitely be some coolant. Um, whole thing comes out just like a shower. Well, there we are. One water pump is out. Now, um, what we, we do want to do is uh, just clean this area here. The new pump comes with a new gasket. Um, but uh, we just want to make sure that if, if there was any any leaks, um, usually a little bit of a sort of corrosion forms around and also a bit of the coolant sort of burns out around and it causes, um, it, it can cause a leak, a future leak. So that's why I say just clean the area 
uh, we could put a, a bit of paper in there just to avoid some dust going in maybe give this area a clean and, and obviously all around it and also could use a little bit of uh, this sort of sanding paper just to make sure the surface will be nice and clean so that's what I'm going to do I'm just gonna clean the area right so that's the old pump there that's gonna be getting changed um, I'm waiting for the new one that's the pulley and the relevant bolts and the three bolts from the water pump I was looking at the torque setting for this apparently it's a 15 newton meters for these bolts I'll double check that in a minute these ones they were so easy to remove the, I'll, I'll try to check the torque setting as well although I haven't actually got um, the right size tool so I wouldn't be able to torque this anyway but um, if you do have if you do buy the correct tool so this is the right tool the one with the splines however you need something uh, smaller than this to fit in the space that we have um, right so I'm going to have some lunch <laughs> As I'm waiting for the parts anyway, the belt is down there and uh, we're going to have a new belt, we're going to have coolant, so those are the things you're going to need, obviously, if you're changing the water pump. And uh, I may use a little bit of sealant around here, just uh, some high temperature sealant, something like this one here, just a little bit to go around the gasket. And that's it. Okay, here's my new pump. It's a genuine VW1. That's the part number there. 03C121008H water pump. So, as I said, I'm going to apply a little bit of this around the gasket. Literally just a very small amount. Oops. That's it. And we're ready to feed that back. So I'm just going to get some gloves on. And actually, uh, before I do that, this is the belt I've got. 6PK1733 but um, just remember that th this might not exactly fit your car if you have a, if your car doesn't have AC or something like that the belt might be shorter or whatnot so always get the parts according to your chassis number or your registration number if you buy the parts that I've got here and then they don't fit then you're stuck so <laughs> best not to do it that way okay let's go Time to get the pump back in there. I clean the, uh, the surface. So I'm just gonna get this bolt in there. So sort of line it up a little bit. be easier to do it. <laughs> the bottom one I'm not sure okay I 
is in place. So it's just a matter of tightening these bolts now. And while I was having lunch, I was trying to see, trying to Google the torque setting, which was, uh, there was, there was a lot of information and I was trying to look for something on the specific car. And in the end, what I found was, uh, I think torque setting of 15 newton meters and again um, as you may notice I'm putting these bolts in by hand in this case scenario just trying to get them in all the way in uh, because they came out by hand so I should be able to put them in by hand and don't want to be forcing these bolts especially into the uh, cylinder block there and then causing some kind of problem okay so i've got this uh torque wrench which is a small one uh, 15 newton meters does seem like like a lot but uh, i don't know i do hope i got the right info Okay, um, to be fair, I reduced it to, to 14 there, but I'm going to put it back to 15 because I just wanted to check that I'm definitely in the right. Okay. That is 15 newton meters and so that's what I'm going to do with the other two it's a little bit awkward of an, a bit of an awkward angle here to be honest okay that's 15 and there is one more obviously I need to do here. Right, I think I just need the, the room here, so I'll tighten that to 15 as well. So I've done this too at 15 Newton meters, or uh, it says 11 uh, foot pound, that's what it says. Um, so I have managed to do those two without any issues at that setting. Okay, pump is in, bolts are tight. Now, you can fit the pulley. And uh, just need to sort of line it up. And the only information I could find on this, it says uh, 10 newton meters plus something like 90 degrees. But even that, um, that sort of that information, I'm not sure if it's correct or not, to be honest. Plus, I want to be able to do that myself. I don't really have the uh, torque wrench size small enough to fit here. OK, 
okay those are in um, this new pump feels so much more uh, solid than the old, other one <laughs> uh, right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit the belt and then uh, tighten those those bolts otherwise it'd be a bit difficult to do it this way around although it's possible okay so get your new belt and get it around all the wheels I'm pretty sure you made a drawing as suggested <laughs> but hopefully So, see what I mean? Easy to get confused. <laughs> right, so this belt actually comes this way according to my own drawing. Just make sure it's sitting all around the wheels properly, otherwise uh, you will struggle to, to pull it. Okay, that's in. So hopefully now we can try and tighten those pulley bolts up here. In this case scenario, the whole engine is turning a little bit. We could potentially just wedge something there. and tighten our bolts so it, if but the engine is moving a little bit clockwise which is the normal rotation Again, I think we get the idea what I'm doing, tightening those. I'm just wedging my screwdriver against here and here. To stop this from turning. Uh, those bolts are not really that tight, so... We don't need to apply much force there. Okay, everything is done here. Everything is nice and tight, the belt is on. And don't forget to put this pipe back on if you removed it. Uh, put it back on and put the clip back on if you didn't lose it like I almost did. <laughs> but make sure you don't lose it because you need it. Uh, otherwise that pipe can come off. So next would be to put the splash guard back here. Put the wheel back on and then I'm going to lower the car and uh, top up some coolant. It's time to get some coolant in there. Um, the one I have here, it's already mixed. I've already prepared it. I always have some prepared, um, but it's, it's something like this, what I'm using, antifreeze, coolant, long life. Um, uh, I guess that's a part number there. Or if it's a different make, could be something like this, Extreme G30 antifreeze coolant and sometimes it's actually written on the cup but not in this case but anyway it's time to get the coolant in there so i'm just gonna fill up this tank and then i'm gonna start running the car as well 
right well it's gonna start running down anyway once we get the engine running the pump is going to start circulating the water as well as it gets to there and so the other thing would be to The other thing would be to get the uh, your heating on hot. So if we're going to be um, basically if we're going to be bleeding the system now, we want to get hot air in the car. So switch your blower here, put it on hot, and as we sort of bleed the system, we're gonna know once it's sort of bled when we get um, hot air coming out of the vents here. So that's the idea. So always when you're bleeding, keep an eye on the temperature because sometimes until the coolant gets to the head, it starts heating up. So it's a good idea to keep an eye. That's sort of bubbling up, has to go into the system. As it goes down as well, we want to top it up. That's the idea as the bubbles come up. And at the same time, while the system is running and whatnot, just make sure there's no, obviously, any leaks underneath from the repair that you just done. So I'm going to be doing that for now until uh, we get to a certain temperature ideally i want to get the fan to come on so the water circulates all around and we can have a a proper level here so that's really what i want to do get the car hot nice and hot get the uh, air hot air coming into the car and get the um, as it gets really hot obviously it has to cool down so thermostat opens goes into the radiator the fans come on, cool down the coolant, and it goes around back into the engine. That's that's what, what I really want. So we're reaching the end of this video, really. Um, this um, this the coolant went all the way down. This was empty. I top up some more coolant to the uh, sort of to the max there. You might not be able to see it, but there's a little line on the side and it shows the max that's what i've got it at the moment uh now the, the the there is hot air in here so there's nice hot air coming inside the temperature is by the way um my coolant as you're running the engine and the coolant goes down the the red light here comes on because obviously uh, the, it's detecting that there's there's no coolant <laughs> um, so you can switch the car off and top up the coolant and start the car again and, that, and that's going to reset that light but uh, make sure your temperature is at 90 if it starts going above then obviously uh, maybe switch the car off let it cool down but that shouldn't really happen unless you occasionally I, I get into the car and I rev the engine a little bit to uh, make the process a little bit faster but uh, sometimes that can cause the needle to go beyond 90 so I mean just be patient take your time and we're pretty much uh, so all I'm waiting now now I have hot air inside I'm pretty sure the uh, the system is now bled all I'm waiting is for the fans to come on that can take a little while so that's why I will go into the car now and start revving it a little bit so the uh, so that the temperature goes up a little bit and the fans come on and then and then we're pretty much done so all in all I've just checked underneath there's no leaks the whole system is uh, is, is sealed it's not, there's, there's no leaks anywhere which I'm happy about the noise that I was having 
is gone. So that's really good news as well, obviously, because um, then that confirms our pump was potty. Not that I was not sure it was the pump. I was 100% I was sure the pump was faulty here. Um, but um, just as a reassurance or confirmation, obviously, <laughs> the noise is gone and, uh, and so happy days. Anyway, if you have any questions, just ask me. If I can help, I will reply. If I can't help, obviously, I'll let you know that I can't help. Otherwise, um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if the video helps you. Uh, just remember you're doing whatever you do or you don't do, you do it at your own risk um, for yourself and for your vehicle. So always be patient. Uh, take care of your whatever you're doing. Take care of yourself. Obviously, don't injure yourself. Don't cut your hands, whatever. And make sure you do the torque settings and whatnot in order to not to have avoid having any any issues in the future in a year next week after you finish the job or whatever uh, so i always recommend that at the end of the day this is just a guide there's many guys out there you can choose which one you want to watch or not um, but at the same time it's a good idea sometimes to get a uh, a feel of what you're doing by by watching a few videos because then um, then you'll have a better idea of how to do it I often if I don't know how to do something I often watch three or three or so videos depending on what the job might be if it's a difficult one I watch three or four videos until I find one that I really like or that I, I understand what's going on and then I actually um, sort of go by that. Uh, but it's up to you. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. See you on the next video.